guys. I think I noticed another escape pass on the on, on way over somewhere else. Okay. Because this mountain right there, then like off to that side, back to the street right now. Uh, you get up a certain thing right there. You see that? Yeah. Are you sure you want to do this, Jake? Yeah. Why not? Because you might die. Don't pay. Turn that off first. I'm going to shut it down on you, Jake. Okay. Can you get on that ledge right there? I'm not going to try. Lower. Okay, I'm going to hang on to this cord here. Okay, Dooley. Yeah. Can you unravel that soon? Hi friends, Strider66 here, and the footage you just saw was shot in November 2009. Crazy, right? Also, please excuse this mess behind me. So anyways, during my college days, a couple friends of mine, Bryce and Jake, we like to do some urban exploring. And one of the places we came across was an old decommissioned Atlas missile silo in Kansas. I believe it was near Council Grove, Kansas, off Highway 56. Um, a couple years after we found it, because we went back multiple times, uh, the owner had fenced it off, so we quit going. So it's really cold outside, and I'm talking like single digits, windshield below zero. So I don't want to do any filming outside today. So I came across on an old external hard drive of mine some a ton of video footage that I'd shot in college and you know us exploring this missile silo and I did make a video years ago on my other YouTube channel Dooley Film it's D-U-L-L-E-F-I-L-M I don't really use it anymore um, but back then the video I had ended up making I tried doing kind of it was kind of Blair Witch you know style and this time I want to do more of a informative vlog, fun style. Keep in mind, um, this was during my college days. Um, I was 19, so the language is not going to be 100% clean. I'm talking PG-13. There's footage that I didn't use in the other other video, which I will put the link to that video in the description below, so you can watch that one and kind of see. Uh, just sit back. Keep in mind. This footage was all shot in 2009, November 2009. Um, you're gonna see sort of the journey early on when we were trying to find uh, the main missile silo we found because the first couple were actually on private property so we couldn't go there. And then, again, keep in mind on the language. The video is gonna be a bit shaky. I wasn't too focused on how I was shooting for B-roll and whatnot. So just keep that in mind. Hopefully this is informative. You might laugh a bit. I will just because, I don't know, this, these are my college days. So I hope you enjoy. This is the beginning of uh, our adventure today to uh, explore different missile silos in Topeka, Kansas, or around Topeka, Kansas actually. And uh, hopefully we'll find something cool to put on this film. So. Uh, I'm Brian Dealey, and this is Bryce Grammer, and, it, and if we do not survive, I would like this to count as my last will and testament. Now we're on a creepy ass road. This fucking is a creepy, this is a creepy ass road right here. Who knows what we're going to see. It's all like three deer. I cussed them out for killing my old car. Bastards. Wow. What? It's just creepy. 
creepy. Unless we've got a giant ass hill to go up. Man, the guys at the house on that road trip, they would love, because they were trying to find an old country road and they were looking for a gravel road and this is like perfect. This is, this is a dirt road. Oh, there's asphalt. That oh. was a bridge. <laughs> thing that I kind of learned today is that they weren't really that hidden from the public. Everyone knew they were there. Like, they were accepted as like, oh yeah, there's a missile base there. They were only in operation for a very short period of time. Like, 1961 through like 1965. Here's this fucking fog that is creepy as shit. That is dirt. There's Maybe no it is. I think it's fog. I don't know. That's where the road curves. Is that a good sign? Is that a bad sign? It sounds like a farmer's truck. It is. Our first attempt for uh, this. Uh, crazy adventure. Uh, that former truck we were talking about earlier. Um, actually was uh, the person that owned the property. Uh, there was no trespassing sign, so we had no reason to believe that, I mean, it was someone's property. You know, it could have still been, I don't know. There was a bar barbed wire fence for the other cross, but it was very low. There was no way to tell that you know, we weren't supposed to be there. Uh, but uh, the guy in the truck uh, cussed, uh, cussed at us, uh, told us to leave or he would call the cops. We responded nicely and told him we'd leave right away and that's exactly what we did. We are now stopped at a BP gas station. Uh, might go check out some other sites. Back, this is our fourth try. This time we got Jacob Starr with us. And uh, this one looks like it's going to be a success. We're uh, 160, 170 yards from the spot. See, it, it te it's telling us that we're going away from the actual coordinate. No, so, the flag is. Yeah, it's over there. It's freaking open. It's open. Is there even a key? Yeah, but it's not all here in terms of why. It's right here. Right here we go. This is it. It's a no trespassing sign, but it's from the original fort. I don't think that applies to right now. Plus it was open. Right there. That's a hatch to go down. And this, bam! Look at that. This is the <laughs> hey, So, we're, are we fucking going in here? Let's go. I'm parking it. Flashlights. Right there's a guard shack. We can, we can get in that too. It's not it is important to offer. It's cold. What is this for? Pictures! So we're at a decommissioned Atlas E missile base in operation from uh, 1961 to 1965. What are we looking at here? Um, this looks like a lot of ductwork from the inside. Um, they've torn it out, probably going to sell it off. Uh, scrap metal, I would guess. Probably get a lot of money for this stuff. Um, someone's been having a little fun with their uh, firearms out here, shooting shooting at the ductwork. Um, yeah, I want to find a bullet. You want to find a bullet? Yeah. I haven't seen the guys. Over there, there's a couple of freezers. Look like they probably came from in there. And as we've, we've been here before, you can see uh, uh, pipes that were cut down from inside. We saw where that was cut off last time we were here. Um, 
It's cold. This over here was the site of a building. What was this building? This was a type of control slash communications um, post. Some, well, no, actually, excuse me, I am mistaken. This was a, a utility building. This cement pad here and the cement pad over there probably both were um, storage and whatnot. You see you've got a couple of you know, old cot. And I'm and I'm not sure what if some of this stuff did not come from uh, somewhere else. Um, this I know definitely came from here. In old uh, photographs I've seen this on the top of um, some of the, the exterior hatches. So um, that definitely came off Looks like a vent over dome. there. In fact, I think it came off that big circular thing. Kids boot. Amazing. Take a picture of the boot. Why not? And as you can see, it's fenced off. The barbed wire is facing out. How many times have I told you? They did not want anyone in, one in here back in the day. People kind of knew about it in the area, but... Um, it was down, down, downplayed quite a bit. This is one of nine missile sites, um, all containing Atlas E, uh, ICBM, uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles, that were located in and around the uh, Topeka area, um, all under the uh, control of Forbes Air Force Base, now known as Forbes Field. The group that worked out here, the men that stayed here, were the group was, I believe, it was called the. 584th uh, Missile Squadron. I believe that's what it was called. Well, let's go uh, check out the other side. You can see these pipes. I can almost guarantee you it's a roller bearing led back into there. In fact, this actually might have been the uh, power plant that uh, fueled the power in the in the actual missile missile area because this was not hooked up to any um, public power line of any sort. It was completely independent of. And, and completely removed from the grid um, so that in, in the event of some nuclear attack by the Soviet Union, um, they would still be operational. It's a big pipe. You think water maybe? No, there's a big tank down there. There's, it's not just a pipe that goes straight down. There's a huge room in there. Where's that? that I know exactly what that is. That is the fuel storage tank. Yeah, probably. Because yeah, another, I've seen pictures of other sites where obviously that, that, that has one huge chunk of metal down there. And they've actually dug it out and sold it. And they took the pit where it was Where does that go? Is it just right there? It's just right there. There's a little bit of a Okay, over here, various vents. I don't know what all these are used for, but be painted bright orange. It goes down into the uh, living quarters um, of the facility where men would have been stationed, and this was not used normally. This was just uh, kind of a last resort. Escape. escape to get out of there. The locking mechanism is gone. Probably in case of fire or some other, uh, some other, uh, something that happens in there. So. Bryce. What? Are you serious? Yeah.
I'm not gonna try to step on this level because it's probably all rotted out. But I'm couldn't you step on the edge on the uh, supports? It's all wood. Yeah, Range Rover, all wood. Okay. <laughs> Can you get some pictures? your camera teetering on the edge there he's good shut, shut up Bryce wrap that thing around your wrist man I will oh, you're good. there's like a pool ladder that somebody used to get down really why would they need a pool ladder what? All I saw earlier when I looked over there was the wall, where the wall is supposed to be. There's like another area for another room over there. There's a huge pipe in the wall, and there's a board going from a platform onto the pipe. That goes that way. Oh, you know what? Think there, you think that's from that freaking tank? Somebody jump down in there? Man, I would not fucking jump down in there. I don't know what fucking chemicals are in there. What still residues left in there. Because it'd be pretty damn hard to climb back up that thing if you got right in that one mouth. I'll bet you would I'll bet you whatever want to bet that's 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 what somebody did. Continuing on. Um Various fixtures coming out of the ground, and that right over there would be the gate, and then the road up into the site, and then this road leads back in there which you can see the metal sticking out there that was a blast door 20 inches thick steel and inside there um, is the launch bay and that's where Atlas E missile would have been stored um, over here yeah Another box of some kind. And up on here you can see the various patches and whatnot, platforms where some type of equipment once stood. I'm gonna walk up here and get a better shot on top here. I guess I'll use the opportunity to talk a little bit about the Atlas missile itself. Um, the Atlas missile uh, was one of the first ICBMs uh, put into use by the United States military. ICBM standing for uh, Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. Um, it weighed well over 200,000 pounds when it was fully fueled and loaded. It was fueled actually by uh, a mixture of nitrogen, oxygen, and they always had to keep some pressure inside the missile. It can never be fully empty or the thin metal shell of the tank would actually collapse the missile on itself. Um, walking now on top of the cement platform which is what would be the um, shop below us. The shop they use for storage and for work on the missile itself. Uh, over here, you can see this another pit right here. Um, 
you can see along the sides that rusted metal there there was at one time a giant uh, steel door that covered this and it was kept in the closed position usually and when it was time to launch they decided they were going to launch a missile which never happened here obviously um, they, they, they decide okay we're going to launch a missile and a little view down inside there say okay we gotta we gotta fuel it and then prep it for launch and that took about 20 minutes the problem with that is is it takes about 30 minutes for a Russian uh, nuclear missile to reach this site that obviously would not work not enough time um, it took a lot of time because the missile was of course laying flat in this bay it was over 75 feet long and then it has to stand up and then launch so um, that's why the program only lasted a short period of time because it just wasn't uh, efficient enough to work. Um, some of the rooking down there. This room across the way down there, that would have been used for the storage of the actual fuel itself um, when they're prepping it for launch, the fuel is being used. Um, of course, on top, various vents and hatches who I don't for the life of me know what they're used for. Um, <clears throat> back behind it, as, as you know, as you've seen, when you see a video of a uh, missile taking off, there is quite a bit of um, smoke and exhaust and whatnots that are being propelled out of the bottom of the uh, rocket or missile and that would actually um, it would fill this whole area if you gave it a chance to so they planned for it and underneath right here on this end I'll give a shot of later. Um, there is a big hole, a big well. It's filled with rainwater now, as most of these old missile bases are. And that hole goes underground and it comes out over here on what also used to have a giant sliding door. This is the exhaust. Let the exhaust out the back of here so it didn't get caught up in the shop and, you know displace all the oxygen. As you can see, and the sliding door on here has been long taken off and scrapped. Um, and it goes down into water that used to be um, empty, of course, for the, for the smoke to get through. Behind here, see the rails. The door would have slid on right there. Some of them have been removed and then scrapped. This hole right here, right here, and right there, these foundations, fittings. This uh, was where there was a huge hydraulic jack, and this thing would actually come out of the side of this vent. And it was actually attached to the top of the missile, holding it up. There, there are my buddies. I just, uh, I, I noticed that hole the last time we were here and looking at some pictures on, on the um, internet of them standing in the upright and locked position at sites like this. I noticed, oh, hey, wait, look, that's what that hole's for. It's different. Well, that's interesting to note. The area down there is a lot bigger than we thought it was. Down there. There's where that 
giant hydraulic jack would have came out of. And like I say, this goes underwater. This goes down into the ground underneath this right here. And then it opens up again. Right over here. As you can see that giant pit in the floor. Various stands around it. Um, lots of fittings and lots of stuff has been removed, but there was a lot of equipment and pipes and riggings that would hold up the rocket and actually raise it to the vertical position, which took time. As you can see, there's another home floor over there. Helped stand it up in the first place. I'm going inside. The only sound I hear right now is echoing and water dripping. It's pretty damn creepy. As you can see, there's a lot of graffiti on the wall. Right now, I'm just in the little tunnel bay. There's this guy, so it's not a, uh, it's not too creepy. Hey, I need light. Can I borrow a flashlight? Yeah. And it has just recently rained, so the water level might be up in there a little bit. We need to remember that. I gotta untie it. Was that wooden door on there? Yeah. That's not original. No. Thank you. That'd be. Why did they put that there, you think? Jake, every time, Damn. steps right in the frickin' mud. Look at that. Oh, well, I don't have a fucking flashlight. I can't see what I'm doing. Jake, I can see the darker floor. Uh, this ground is disgusting. I think this is a good example of the uh, rebar, reinforced concrete, at least two feet thick, all throughout this place, all the walls, ceilings, at least two feet thick concrete, rebar reinforced. And that's not just any regular rebar, but I think it is. Yeah, it's extra thick rebar right there. Wait, put the light back down there so I can focus. Even with three of us, it's creepy down here. Look at that rack. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't notice that rack last time. Cable rack. Yeah, cables. Bunch of wiring right up there. That's the thing stuff. Yeah, look at all of that stuff. Keep moving. And that right there is a thing too. It's over there in the same patch. You see? You see there's a circle right here on the floor. I know, but I think it might have been... Okay, no, I was wondering if it might be, it might be, be like paint, the painted circle so they know where the hatch is. No, it's just, time. it's just that this is dirt, and this is dirt, and the water leaked. Do you see water on the inside of that? Yeah. I think that's the one that's cemented shut. Still in. Who falls down? Who's not? Uh, I would prefer that the one person's flashlight is in front of me and one that is behind me. Okay. That's right. We're entering, even though it says they're not entering.
It seems like there was more light on the it seemed like what? That's that door to the side, out in front of the glass door. It seemed like there was a lot more light. Let me see, inside, what is this, this tank? Powertrain for the DuPont console. I wonder if that's original or not. Probably not. How good is the video, I think? That's all right, and my vision's working okay. I'm trying to be your white crew over here. What's that? Corn. It's canned. Mm, it's Dump. good. Pepper. Nice. You smell delightfully, delightfully delicious. Who? You. Oh. <laughs> all right, I'm editing that out. I set up here. What does it say? The fallen one. <laughs> now this is, we're getting back in the wood. You can see by like the mold. This at one time was doing full up to the top. You know? Maybe that's why everything looks like it was on fire. It's just all molded. I think it's all molded. Which means it's not very healthy for us. Right now. There's an old rusty space heater. The wire and everything's all melted. You can see there's cables. Yeah, see that right there? All along that here. Yeah, that's that uh, ladder There's a huge pipe. The ground is all rusted. It looks like this whole place flooded. All right, we made it out. Alive. Call three. Okay, cut it.